Hello and welcome to Dining with Death. This episode is on my playlist, Deadly Destinations, where we visit the sites of terrible events. Sometimes they're murders and sometimes they're mass murders. I'm gonna take you on a little tour of the area. We're gonna see the site and of course we're gonna eat here. I'm Stacy Lee, let's begin. Newport Beach is the heart of the OC. The OC being, of course, Orange County, California. Where to start with Newport Beach? Let's start with the positives. It is unbelievably beautiful. It is lush and green and almost tropical. The beaches are spectacular. In fact, the beaches are the best in America, second only to Hawaii. They don't compare to those in Bora Bora and Fiji, according to beach experts, but they are as good as it gets in the US. The weather here is beautiful. The mornings are misty and foggy, but that burns off by around 11 a.m., sometimes noon, and you're left with the bluest skies and the greenest greens and the softest of breezes. The landscape is stunning. Giant cliffs rise out of the ground, towering over the ocean below, providing some of the most breathtaking views of the water anywhere in the country. It's never very hot and it's never very cold. And if you love being outside, this is the place for you. Except it probably isn't. The average household income in Newport Beach, California is $220,000 per year. And that is if you want to live here very simply. When I tell you that this place is expensive, you're thinking like what? $3,000 a month for an apartment? No. If you want a small, older apartment that's as far away from the water as you can get and still be in Newport Beach, you're looking at a minimum of $5,000 a month. If you want to live anywhere near the water and in an apartment that was built after 1990, you're going to pay $7,000 a month plus. In fact, when I was researching, the cheapest apartment I found in Newport Beach downtown area was $8,700 a month, and I found two and three bedroom apartments downtown going for sixteen grand a month. And you know what? That's just the way they want it. You see, if you don't make half a million dollars a year, they don't want you here. I hesitated on whether or not just to say this outright, but you guys know me. I'm always going to give it to you straight. It's very elitist here. This is not a place of diversity. This is not a place of progressive thought. And this is not a place that has any tolerance whatsoever for the human struggle. It is beautiful on the outside and it is gorgeous to look at. They keep it that way by making sure everyone plays by the rules. Their rules made for people like them. In the 25 years I've been vacationing here, I've never seen a homeless person. Not once. So either Newport Beach has very quietly and magically single-handedly solved the problem of homelessness or... <laughs> yeah, I don't need to finish that sentence. The cops stop anyone who doesn't fit the mold here and they drive them to the county line and they tell them not to come back. Now, there is a homeless shelter here. It has 20 beds. So, you know, they can officially say they have a homeless shelter. I love to vacation here because it's so gorgeous and because our family has traditions here, traditions that I love. Living here, I'm going to be honest, it's probably not for me. I need to be within driving distance of a really sketchy dive bar and a place that's been using the same pots and pans for 50 years in order to feel comfortable. <laughs> I'm not trying to bag on the people that live here. Many of them are very cool, hippie types and beach lovers and nature lovers, great people doing great things. But the powers that be here very much want to keep this place uber Stepford. The women all look very much alike. They weigh 110 pounds. They've had a lot of work done, which, hey, fine. The men here get lots of work done, too, and they also work out a lot. Most people here are very into their appearance, and it is very much everything you saw on the TV show Desperate Housewives, which, of course, inspired the first Real Housewives franchise on Bravo, the Real Housewives of Orange County. Yes, this is where that show is filmed and it's where the ladies live. If you want to live in a community like those you have seen on television, the gated communities of Newport Beach, for something like this up on the cliffs overlooking the ocean, these start at around $15 million. And I said start. I saw homes listed up in this area for over $30 million. Yes, it takes a lot of money to live here, but only a very small portion of even these types of people are paying to live on these cliffs. 
Most live in neighborhoods and along the waterways where a very usual and typical American home goes for about three million bucks. Like I said, very exclusive. There are beautiful shopping complexes and lots of good restaurants. Not all of them are expensive, but almost none of them are cheap either. Every place you look here is well maintained, well manicured, beautiful, and luxurious. This land used to belong to the Tongva and Huaneño people. Explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo mapped the coastline of this area in 1542, but it wasn't settled until 200 years later. In 1769, Newport was granted to Don Jose Antonio Yorba under Spanish and then Mexican rule. After the Civil War, the land was developed by American settlers and was used for ranching. The area was very rural and wasn't even incorporated into a city until 1906. Because there are much larger and more accessible shipping ports nearby, Newport quickly became a tourist and vacation destination because of its proximity to the ocean and because of the relaxing and beautiful scenery. Even with all of the changes that have taken place over the centuries, that vibe remains. Even with the Ferraris and the Teslas and the Maseratis everywhere, this place still manages to keep a chill vibe. A lot of people live here because there is just good energy here. It feels good to be here. There's something magnetic about this place, and that's undeniable. You just feel grounded and peaceful, and I can totally understand why, if money is no object, you might want to make this place your home. Enter Bill McLaughlin. Bill McLaughlin was a self-made millionaire. He was a brilliant man who invented a medical device that separates blood from plasma. It revolutionized that area of the medical world and it made Bill a fortune. Bill made his first million by the time he was in his early 30s and by the mid-1990s he was worth around 55 million dollars. He did it all while being a genuinely nice person that didn't step over people to get to the top. He did have a legal dispute with a former partner of his who sued him, but that person lost their lawsuit when the judge found in favor of Bill. Bill McLaughlin was living what most would consider the American dream. He had a beautiful home here in Balboa Coves, which is a community that sits on a little inlet of water. The backyard of every one of these homes is waterline, and many of the residents have a boat tied up out back. Bill had a large boat, and he also owned his own plane. Bill had a handsome young son and two gorgeous daughters, and was happily married to his wife of 25 years, Susan. The problem was, Susan was not happily married to Bill. After decades of marriage, with the kids raised and out of the house, Susan McLaughlin left Bill, and he was devastated. His family was everything to him, and losing his wife was very, very difficult for Bill. When the divorce was final, Bill began to date, and that's when this woman came into his life. This is Nanette Ann Johnston Packard McNeil. Nanette dated a lot. She married a lot. And she began dating Bill McLaughlin, even though she was the same age as his daughters. His family was not happy. In the midst of this new relationship, something terrible happened. Bill's son, Kevin, was hit by a drunk driver on Halloween night as he was skateboarding, and he sustained very serious injuries that left him with a severe brain injury. Kevin's ability to speak was almost taken from him, and Bill devoted his life to his son's care. Kevin lived with Bill, and Bill took care of all of Kevin's needs. He was determined to help his son make progress after this terrible tragedy. Bill was dating Nanette and helping his son and just living his life when it all came to an end. On December 15, 1994, Bill McLaughlin was at home, here in this beautiful home at 67 Balboa Cove. This is a gated community. We got very lucky and that's the only reason we were able to get in and get you the footage that I will be showing you of this community today. I'll just leave it at that. As you can see, this is a very quiet community. The road out front is busy, but you'd never know that from back behind the gates. It feels very safe and very private, and again, very exclusive. The homes are close to each other, as real estate here is at a premium. They don't waste a single square inch. Balboa Coves is mainly just one long drag with a couple of cul-de-sacs branching off the main road. And again, it's all been built around the little water inlet that sits just behind the homes. 
Every couple of houses, there is a walkway between those houses. I was a little nervous kind of snooping around here, but you guys know I'm getting my shots for you so you can get a good look at the area. As you can see here, there are small docks with plenty of little boats tied to them, and there's even a tiny little beach. Doesn't this look nice to walk out your back door and jump on your boat and take a cruise on the water? It seems very luxurious because it is. We need to talk a little about Nanette. Bill's daughters describe their relationship as strange. They don't think either of them were in love, but they say that Nanette was desperate to be rich. They say all she cared about was money. Bill knew he was being used. He just didn't seem to care. It bothered his kids, it bothered his friends, but Bill continued with the relationship. Within just two months, Bill had moved Nanette and her two children in with him. They took vacations all around the world together. They went skiing, they went to tropical locations, and Nanette could never get enough. She is a very greedy woman who wanted the high life more than anything in the world and would do whatever it took to get it. After a year of dating and much to the dismay of Bill's children, he proposed to Nanette and gave her a giant diamond. He then wrote both Nanette and her children into his will. He even bought a million dollar life insurance policy and named Nanette as the benefactor. Nanette finally had what she wanted and she had Bill McLaughlin right where she wanted him. On the night of December 15, 1994, Bill returned home from a trip to Las Vegas and found this note from Nanette saying she was at her boy's soccer game and would be home late. Bill and Kevin had just eaten dinner together. Kevin was upstairs in his bedroom listening to music and Bill McLaughlin walked into his kitchen to get something just like he had done a thousand times before. And right here in the middle of that kitchen, his life was taken. As Bill was walking into his kitchen, his killer was walking through the pedestrian gate on the side of the house. The two men met in the kitchen and locked eyes. Bill McLaughlin was then shot with this gun a total of six times. He died on his kitchen floor. Kevin ran to the phone and called 911, but because his speech abilities had been severely damaged in his accident, he had a very difficult time telling the 911 operator what had happened. As Kevin tried to talk to the operator, he sat with his father as his life slipped away. Nanette returned home from the soccer game and shopping around 10 p.m. to find her house crawling with police and her fiancé dead on the floor. But Nanette hadn't been at her son's soccer game alone. You see, Bill McLaughlin wasn't the only man in Nanette's life. Nanette had a boyfriend. This is Eric Naposky. Eric Naposky was an NFL player with a very short career from 1988 to 1989 with the New England Patriots, and he also played in exactly one game for the Indianapolis Colts. After that, he played four seasons in the World League of American Football with the Barcelona Dragons, where he had a little better success. In 1994, Eric was living in Newport Beach, and he was, in fact, dating Nanette. According to Eric and his family members, Nanette was playing Eric like a fiddle. They say they had no idea she was engaged to Bill McLaughlin. From what they knew, Nanette was madly in love with Eric. She brought her kids to their family events. They knew her daily routine, and none of it included being engaged to another man. Nanette told Eric's family she had an MBA in business. They say she was a hard worker and she was intelligent. And one other thing. She had a prototype design for a medical device that separated blood from plasma. Yes, Nanette, this evil con woman, was taking credit for Bill McLaughlin's invention, and she told Eric's family that she took her design to her boss, Bill McLaughlin, and that together they sold the device and made tens of millions of dollars. Eric's family knew of Bill McLaughlin, but they knew him to be Nanette's business partner, not her fiance. Very quickly into the investigation of Bill McLaughlin's murder, the police discovered that Nanette had been lying to not only Bill, but to Kevin and to Bill's daughters, to Eric and his family. They were immediately suspicious of Eric Naposky and believed him to be Bill's killer. They briefly investigated the man I mentioned earlier, the one that had sued Bill and lost, but he had an airtight alibi. Eric claims that after he and Nanette attended her kid's soccer game, Nanette drove him to his house in Tustin and told him she had some shopping to do before going home. 
Eric says he then changed his clothes and headed to work his security job at the Thunderbird nightclub in Newport Beach. He said on the way to his job, his beeper went off and he stopped at a payphone to call his work at around 9 p.m. Well, this was just about the same time Bill McLaughlin was shot. So police had a serious problem. If Eric Naposky was at a payphone near downtown Newport Beach, how could he be here in Balboa Cove shooting Bill McLaughlin? At the end of December, after the murder, Bill's daughter found something very alarming. On the day Bill McLaughlin was murdered, someone had written a $250,000 check to a trust. Bill's daughter immediately alerted the bank and the police. The signature on the check was forged and the check had been cashed by Nanette. The bank then looked into the account further. Nanette had stolen around half a million dollars from Bill McLaughlin by forging his name. Bill McLaughlin most likely had no idea Nanette had been stealing from him, but with that last amount of money, he would definitely find out. Police were sure that Nanette and Eric had conspired to kill Bill McLaughlin, but the district attorney did not feel there was enough evidence to proceed with murder charges. Nanette was charged with forgery and theft, but the murder case went cold. Eric and Nanette broke up and Eric left California while Nanette went to jail for about six months on theft charges. Six months for half a million bucks? We sure treat white collar crime differently than other crimes, don't we? Nanette got out of jail and went on the hunt for a new rich man and she found one. She married John Packard and immediately made sure to get pregnant, so even when the marriage quickly broke up, she had his money for at least 18 years. She then married Bill McNeil and had a child with him as well. Nanette Johnston Packard McNeil is a man-eater, and she will have as many kids as she needs to in order to trap these men. Eric Naposky moved back east and fathered two children of his own. He made a living as a personal trainer and even auditioned for a TV show that never ended up happening. The footage for that, the audition reel, gives me secondhand embarrassment. It's really bad, you guys. Eric was raising his family in Connecticut when in 2009, out of nowhere, he was surrounded by police and arrested. He was thrown to the ground and taken into custody. Eric and Nanette may have moved on from the murder of Bill McLaughlin, but the police had not. They had been building a case against the couple for years, and finally, they had enough to arrest them. 3,000 miles away at this same time, Miss Nanette Johnson Packard McNeil was sitting in the back of a police car under arrest and trying desperately to hide from the news cameras surrounding her. It had been 15 years, but Bill's family was thrilled to get the phone call. There had finally been two arrests. Eric Naposky and Nanette McNeil both vehemently deny any involvement in Bill's murder and both claim their innocence, but Eric Naposky wasn't counting on a former neighbor of his working with the police. This is Suzanne Coger, and she told police that back in the mid-90s, when she lived by Eric, he confessed the entire murder plot and the actual event to her. Eric told Suzanne that Nanette and Bill sometimes lived together when they were working on this device they had invented, and that at nighttime, Bill would come into Nanette's room, the woman he thought was his girlfriend, and that was making him furious and angry at Bill. Bill told this neighbor that he wanted to blow up Bill's plane. Eric later admitted that he did say that, but he never said he wanted to kill Bill. But Suzanne says there's more to the story. She says after the murder, she told Eric, I don't even want to know if you had anything to do with this murder. And she claims Eric smiled and said back to her, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, maybe I had somebody do it. Eric Naposky went on trial, and in 2011, he was convicted of the murder of Bill McLaughlin. Nanette Packard was found guilty of murder in January of 2012. Eric Naposky is sitting in prison at Avenel State Prison in California, and Nanette is at Central California Women's Facility. Both of them continue to claim to be innocent. Kevin McLaughlin only lived a few years after his father's murder. He made a lot of progress after his traumatic brain injury, but in October of 1999, at the age of 29, he was surfing in Hawaii and he drowned. Bill's daughters have tried to move on in the best way they can. I'm curious as to what you think of this case. I don't personally have much question as to Nanette and Eric's involvement, but who do you think pulled the trigger? Do you think they did it? 
I feel sorry for Bill McLaughlin because I think it broke his heart when his wife left him. I also think this story is a very good reminder that when everyone in your life is against something you're doing, a relationship you're in, when everyone who loves you is telling you you're on the wrong path, it's a very good idea that you listen to them. Now, as we always do on this playlist, we eat in our deadly destination. This is Dining with Death. I always try and eat at the closest spot to our actual destination, and this was the first spot we saw when we left Balboa Coves. When we walked in here, we had no idea that this is Tony Hawk's restaurant. We walked through the doors, and after immediately being taken by the spectacular view of the water directly behind the restaurant, we noticed, wow, there are a lot of photos of Tony Hawk in here. Then, of course, we looked it up, and yes, this is his restaurant. It's called Guac Amigos, and you guys, it's really good. The chips and the guac were some of the best I've ever had. You won't find a better or more Newport Beach view than this right here. Isn't this just gorgeous? This used to be a Joe's Crab Shack, but most of those have closed. I can't even imagine what this piece of real estate cost. The place is very modern taqueria inside. There is a bar in the center of the restaurant and this cute logo wall in the entrance that's very Instagram friendly. We ordered a margarita and a mojito and both were very good. I love me a street taco, but I'm also kind of picky about my street tacos. I figured they'd be good here and they were. I got one carnitas, one asada and one chili verde. All of them were great. My husband got the same and we both enjoyed them very much. The tortillas were freshly made, the meat was flavorful, the sauces were well balanced, and the toppings were complementary to the meats. Everything you want in a street taco. This place might be a few bucks more than what you'd pay in your town, but honestly, it wasn't expensive and I think that's admirable. They could be charging more just because of where the restaurant is at, but they aren't and I like that. Newport Beach is a place that looks perfect from the outside, but as we know, there is no such thing as true perfection, and you don't have to do much more than scratch the surface of places like this to reveal what's just underneath. People here might have more money than most, but oftentimes they also have more problems, and sometimes those problems end up costing so much, not even the wealthiest folks can buy their way out of them. Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death, Deadly Destinations. Like the video if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. You can also join my Patreon if you'd like to support me. Stay safe and be kind to each other and I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.